Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 as we're going to be starting a new campaign today. Uh, for those who didn't know, because apparently there are a few of you, I'm guessing people who only watch my Horror 4 content don't really pay attention to any of the other videos I put up on the channel or any of the messages. Uh, I did take a week off from YouTube. Uh, I had a PTO time, uh, so I took that off uh, from work, took about nine days off. So I decided to also take time off from YouTube, just have a, a good week of no responsibilities, just hanging out at the house so we didn't really have any money, uh, just kind of relaxing. Uh, so I don't go back to work till next Wednesday, but I did want to start this series this weekend because uh, I've been looking forward to, to starting it. Uh, so we're going to be playing as Communist China. Uh, those of you who watched the last campaign, the Germany one, you may recall in the finale, I asked you which of the China factions uh, you'd like to see on the patron vote, and almost everybody said Communist China. Uh, so that's the one that was on the vote. Uh, the other options for the patron vote were the United Kingdom and Mexico. Uh, Mexico got like 10% of the vote. Uh, the United Kingdom got 37% of the vote or something like that while Communist China got the rest. So that's who we're going to be playing as in this new campaign. I'm definitely looking forward to it uh, because I haven't I haven't played a uh, Communist China campaign in a long time, and I've never done one on the channel. Uh, I haven't done one with their new focus tree either, so this is going to be kind of new for me, uh, playing with the new the new focus tree. haven't played with China at all uh, since Waking the Tiger. Uh, so, yeah, Communist China. Uh, as far as custom game rules here... We are going to go ahead and tick up the difficulty. I typically do two. I think we're going to do one. Uh, so yeah, we'll just be ticking them up. Definitely want to have Japan. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Oh, hold up. I forgot. Uh, China, the bonuses apply to both, you know, regular China and communist China. So that's not desirable because we don't want to tick ourselves up. That kind of nullifies the point of, of trying to help the AI out. But if I, I tick up Japan and, and not China, yeah, that's going to, hmm... Yeah, that's going to cause problems for the AI. We really don't need to do that. China has enough trouble. AI China has enough trouble with AI Japan. So, you know what, guys? This is going to be the first one I haven't ticked anything up in since we've had these, actually. I always stick it up at least one, uh, typically two, though. Yeah, I guess we're not going to do that, which kind of fits with what I'm doing with the AI behavior, because uh, we're not going to change any of this. In fact, we're going to play with historical AI focuses on. I have not played with historical AI focuses on in a long time. Uh, I very rarely ever play with these on because I like the variety uh, that you get for, um, you know, when you have the, you know, have that unticked. Everybody kind of goes different ways. You never really know know what to expect. Uh, and I find that interesting. It makes every campaign feel a lot different. But let's try the historical AI focuses on for once since we never, we never do that. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we'll do. Uh, I'm not going to take up the difficulties here. Um, I've already talked about this in every campaign, but I'll do it in this one too so I don't get a lot of comments about it. Uh, the reason why I don't play on veteran and and elite uh, typically is because they just make everything take longer. Uh, they don't actually make the game uh, that much more difficult. Uh, they just make uh, getting political power take longer, which is for your decisions. Uh, you know, getting you know equipment done so you can build units, uh, getting research done so you can pick new techs. I mean, that's just that's a big part of the game. It just makes it take longer to do it. It's not more difficult per se. Really, the uh, best way to increase difficulty is these, uh, making the AI better, which is what I like to do. But we won't be doing that in this one, which is fine. We're a little old, tiny communist China. Last time I played as a tiny country, the Dutch um, kind of regretted ticking those up because uh, that was it was already pretty challenging. Um, so if you do want to watch a an elite uh, difficulty campaign, uh, the last one I did was the Soviet Union one. Uh, I played on the the hardest difficulty setting, and uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be doing that again just because as again, it just makes everything tedious. Uh, and take longer. All right, so we're into the campaign. We got some good theme music here going as well. You notice we have a good chunk of manpower. That's because Communist China just start on service by requirement, uh, so we get a lot of negatives because of that. But we've got manpower. Uh, we also start on a closed economy with partial mobilization. Our uh, national spirits are aftermath of long march, which makes a uh, construction speed extremely long. Uh, factory output's pretty garbage as well. Uh, we got low popular support, so decreasing, decreasing our stability and our war support, uh, power struggles, uh, making everything cost more down here, uh, and then we also have the Red Army Weekend, uh, which is some negatives for our military. So pretty na pretty bad national spirits that we need to get rid of through our national focus tree. So let's go and take a look at the national focus tree here to begin, get ourselves a uh, focus going. So there's essentially three branches uh, for uh, the Chinese. Uh, the first one here, get a, a few different options for which 
ideology you want to go with, per se, what, uh, which version of socialism you want to go with. We're going to go down the historical route, uh, agrar- agrarian uh, socialism, Mao's route, and I, I just think that's uh, most fitting for us, and it's a pretty decent one, too. Uh, gets rid of the power struggles, uh, I think, quicker than the other ones. Yeah, that's the way it looks like. Uh, no, the Soviet leadership is uh, comparable. Anyways, it's a decent one, and it's the historical route, so that's what we're going to go down. Uh, this is the main one, land redistribution. Uh, some pretty good stuff here. We definitely want to go down the leftern branch here first, since uh, that gives us the research slot. Uh, we won't be able to get the uh, next research slot until uh, we get 69 factories, so it's going to be a while. Uh, and then, yeah, it gives two research slots, excuse me. But this one here, uh, we won't get able to get to 34 factories, so uh, three research slots total. And hopefully we'll get some of them uh, a little bit later. Uh, this is the early one we want. Uh, enforced the three rules. I want to say that this also gets rid of, yeah, the low popular support. And then this one's pretty important too. This is kind of the main one here that we want to go down. Uh, and then the third uh, branch isn't really going to be that important for communist China. Uh, you get that first one for the civilian factories, off-map civilian factories, so useful for construction. And then each one of these is based on a major country. Uh, but in order to take them, uh, we have to be non-aligned or the same ideology as them. This is essentially designed for, you know, regular China, uh, Republic of China, not People's Republic of China. Uh, since, yeah, there's nobody nobody that's the same ideology as you except for the Soviet Union in a, a basic playthrough. So won't be able to go down any of these routes. Also, the worst thing about this is the Soviet Union route is the worst of all six of them. I've looked at all six, and this Soviet Union one's easily the weakest of the six, unfortunately. So as Communist China, we have a real uh, disadvantage here uh, with this massive branch of the tree. Uh, like, you just, you just can't really do much here. Uh, I believe you might be able to go down here, though, uh, once you get the combined arms warfare or something like that. I'm not entirely sure if we can even go down that. Yeah, it looks like we can go all the way down here, and then we can get to these ones here. Uh, so we do want to go down it eventually. Uh, just a bummer that we have to go down the, weak, the weakest one. So to get started, I think we should jump down and get the political power one. I do want to rush to the research slot, of course. Uh, but getting the political power would help us uh, early on here. So we're going to grab that one first. Adjusting that one would be nice as well. Uh, but let's go and get this one. And then we'll go towards the uh, research slot. Uh, we do have two research slots. That's it. That's all we really have available here in the beginning. So we should probably go for, you know, stuff to improve our research. And then, of course, let's go and improve our, our production ability as well, since uh, we're not great at that. Uh, so for our civilian factories, what are the penalties again? I know that I think it's just general construction penalties. Yeah, I don't think, oops, my bad. I don't think we have any that are specific to military civilian factories. Nah, we just suck at construction, period. Uh, as far as factories go, we have... One civilian factory available for building, and only two military factories. So we're in a pretty crappy position, and we can't build anything. So we can't build uh, either factories anyways. Uh, so I guess what we should work on is just getting the infrastructure ticked up. Could do more fortifications, but infrastructure would get us... I don't think we'll go all the way up. Uh, would get us more resources, which would be helpful. So that's what we'll do as far as the civilian factories go. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and take a look at our production uh, we have uh, basic infantry equipment going. I don't think we have access to anything else. Nope. All right. So uh, we'll just put our factories towards that. We have several units that need equipment. Uh, as far as training goes, I don't really like uh, this template here. They're pretty bad. Um, there's no real reason to keep that terrible template. So we're going to switch them all over to uh, this template more than likely. Yeah, we only have the two. So yeah, let's just go and switch them all over to that. Uh, any of the other template. So we only have to work with one template. And it's a better one. That other one's pretty garbage. And then that is going to mean that we're going to have to train everybody up. Uh, so let's go ahead and get them training now. Uh, we'll go ahead and give them, give them our farmer, our typical uh, boot camp uh, label. And I guess that's our set. I meant icon. So I think that's it. I think that's all we had to do before we get started here. I don't think I'm missing anything. You got our troops training. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Really not a whole lot to do. Honestly, we'll probably fly through, in this first episode, I bet we'll fly through the first, at least the first year, probably the first year and a half. Probably make pretty good progress. Uh, once we get the political power, I'll show you guys these decisions that we have available uh, as Communist China. 
Uh, but uh, we won't be able to take them just yet, and I'll explain that once we get to to where we can look. We can look at them now, technically. I suppose we could. Might as well. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe they're not available yet. Okay, yeah, they're not not here yet. So we can't even look at them anyways. Well, they'll eventually pop up. And I only know about these from the developer diaries. And uh, I also read on the forums a little bit about them. So no personal experience with them. And we're just kind of going to go off of what I, I've read about them. Uh, we got the promises of peace, which we don't want to take. Uh, but yeah, we should fly through the first year and a half in this, this episode. It would be nice if we get through the first two years since we'll be sitting on speed five and we won't be in, be in any uh, immediate conflict. Uh, we'll have to see what happens with Japan and China because although the national focuses work, you know, for the historical route when you have that clicked, the decisions and events are not necessarily always uh, exactly to history. So like even with historical focuses on, I think China can still give up uh, Beijing in that one event. All right, so we've got our first uh, focus done. Uh, so let's go ahead and move... I, I te t almost want to go down this route to get rid of the one of those uh, those really negative modifiers there. But man, getting another research slot would be super useful too. But our construction speed is so bad. I guess we don't really have anything to construct anyways. Factory output would be nice. Uh, what is the power struggles one again? Yeah, see that one you can't really do. Yeah, you're pretty limited. What we'll do is let's go ahead and go and get the research slot. It's pretty important. I did want that political power so that we can uh, change up, so we can get, well, you know what? Hmm. Yeah, they are more expensive with the plus 25%. Does that apply to everything? And I don't think you can get any of the design companies for the most part. There might be a couple you can get, but most of them require you to have uh, additional things, so we can't really go down that route. Okay, it seems like only the political advisors are the ones that are increased. Interesting. I think it will still be worth going for the silent workhorse so that we can go ahead and stack political power. Yeah, we'll stack it until we get rid of that, that penalty. That's exactly what we'll do. All right, so let's get the silent workhorse. And then we'll work towards getting rid of that uh, terrible national spirit as soon as we get our research slot. But yeah, I'm excited to play as them. They have some, some interesting mechanics uh, that I haven't got to mess around with at all, uh, these infiltration mechanics. Uh, so we've gotten that knocked out. I guess we're going to go ahead and go down the next route. We want to be able to research as quick as possible uh, since, you know, obviously we don't have a lot of research slots. Uh, but the infiltration mechanics are pretty interesting. I'd like to see how they work in practice. You know, all I know is how they, they're supposed to work in theory, uh, where you select states to infiltrate. Uh, and the more you infiltrate them, the better bonuses you get. Uh, and if you infiltrate them enough... Then when you go to war with that country, so if you go to war with China, or if Japan owned it, because I think you can do it against Japan as well, uh, then those states will rebel and flip over to you as soon as the war happens. Uh, but you do need to use political power to invest in those, so it's not like something you can just do with impunity whenever you want. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and work on uh, getting ourselves a better factory output first. I, I'm not going to go for dispersed. I know there's a lot of people who really like dispersed. I personally... I only find it useful if you think you're going to be bombed a lot. Uh, but even then, the bomb uh, vulnerability is, I mean, it's for me, it's better to use AA and fighters to, to avoid being bombed. Uh, but the other bonuses are the efficiency, retention, and base are also pretty good. But I only find those to be useful when you're going to be doing a lot of switch, switching with your production. Uh, so we are going to go concentrated. And we're just not going to be doing much switching. More than likely, I'm going to, because of our, our limited production base, probably gonna be focusing largely on like infantry equipment guys uh yeah just infantry equipment artillery we'll probably get artillery that'll be our main source of a uh, soft attack yeah i'm not gonna do too much when it comes to tanks since we're just not gonna be able to we just don't have the tech for it the tech slots uh, we got land re redistribution knocked out so that will give us more civilian factories so super helpful let's get the research lot and then we'll see how we're doing on building we're still constructing infrastructure pretty slow guys uh yeah it's it's not fast at all. We're looking at getting the next one here in 1937 at this point. It's going to be a while. But remember, we do have that negative 50% construction speed. So, yeah, we construct incredibly slow. Uh, Ethiopia has been conquered by Italy. Uh, what do we have available over here? Oh, okay. Here we have one of the border clash events uh, have come up. This is what I want to talk about here, guys. So we're not going to do this immediately here, guys. This is... Um, where you can use these to gain states. So we can gain control of the state if we beat them in a border clash. 
But based on what I read, you don't get to pick how many divisions you send over there. And I don't think it's based on the number of divisions you have either. I think it's just a, a, a number, like a specific number. I don't remember what it is for this one here. Like five or six or something like that. I don't think you get a choice. I think it sets up an army for you and everything. So it's a lot different than the way the border clashes used to work uh, prior to waking the tiger, uh, where you move the divisions over to it. So it works a lot differently. And therefore, you don't want to initiate it until your divisions are as powerful as possible, because I believe they have the initial advantage on this one uh, in the uh, incident here. So we don't want to enact it until our divisions are better, because uh, frankly, our, our divisions wouldn't win, more than likely. Do these guys have all their manpower? They do. We can go ahead and pull them out then, uh, and just put them into another army for right now, and let the rest of these guys train up. But we're just not uh, prepared uh, to fight them right now. What we can do is go ahead and i mean they're still lacking equipment but i think it's fine let's go ahead and add another division to uh these guys excuse me another battalion let's get some more infantry units going there with that little bit little bit of experience we have and that means that we will want to go ahead and throw these guys back into the training army i didn't even think about doing that just try and build up that that uh division design since it's so cruddy it's not great as you guys can see communist china starts out in a a pretty weak position overall not too worried about stability at this point. So we're just going to build up our political power, guys. And maybe it might actually be really beneficial to knock out the military staff here early on, actually. Uh, because that would help us in this border incident. And we could also get a theorist, which in this case, I think we'd want to do a military theorist. So we can get the land doctrine research done quicker. And then get more experience so I can change up this division design early. I almost never go for the military theorists. I almost always go for like air or naval. Uh, but we, you know what? We're going to do military theorists in this particular uh, circumstance. So yeah, we're going to get him. Uh, and I think we'll get him early on. I think he'll be the first one we get so that we can make some changes to this division design. Uh, because obviously our experience uh, growth is going to be fairly slow overall. Uh, so we can take a look at what everybody's doing. Okay. Just look at all their focuses, you know, mission to Germany here. I mean, they're historical focuses, so I'm probably not going to be swinging around looking at these too much because we know what they're going to be going for. Uh, they're going to go down the, the historical route, so it's not going to be anything, you know, really surprising, which is why I typically pay attention to those focuses so we can see what all the AI is working on. We got our extra research slot. Excellent. Let's go ahead and get agrarian socialism now to change up that uh, national spirit and get a faster construction speed and factory output. That's going to be super helpful. I was really kind of not sure which one to go for between the research slot and getting rid of those national spirits because they are so bad. Uh, and then let's go for, I almost want to go ahead and go for construction with this extra slot so that we could build a little bit faster because we're so terrible at it. At the same time though, getting something for the infantry would be super useful. You know what? We should probably get the infantry equipment. Yeah, I don't want to put all my stuff towards industry. Not when we know we want to get the best um, modifiers for our troops as we can early on here. So these guys done training. Looks like they all are done training. Okay. And we do have the ability to change them up again. So we're going to do that. And I think right from the get-go, we're going to go ahead and start working on getting uh, 40 width division designs. Uh, because we're going to be playing a lot differently than we typically do. Um, we know where we start with the 20 width and then we kind of mess with the 40 width a little bit later once we have more equipment and experience. I'm only going to have one division design for a while, guys, uh, because of the nature of this communist China playthrough. So we don't have anything available to get here because we still don't have artillery yet. And so I think we're just going to create just big old large divisions. It doesn't mean I won't be able to build any more, though, because I don't think we have the equipment for them. I think we're, we're still lacking. Let me just take a look here. Yeah, we're still lacking a lot on equipment. But yeah, I think it would be best because of the way... Let's go and save that. Because of the way these work here with the incidents, I do think it'd be best to make uh, good divisions rather than more divisions at this point. Uh, just for that, uh, since it's always the same number of divisions that are used for that. So the better we make the divisions, uh, the better we should do in that. Hopefully, that's the ideal anyway. I think these guys should have, have uh, they should have all their manpower and we just take a look here so that they won't be losing any more of that experience. Yeah, everybody's got all their manpower, so let's go and start putting them into that other army now as they get finished up training so we're not wasting equipment. And, yeah, it looks like they're all just about done. And so we just got this last guy. There we go. Uh, and just short on the experience, unfortunately. You know what? We can go ahead and just put them all back in here. I don't even know why I bother. 
since we're going to continue making uh, adjustments to them. And but then we also have the, uh, you know, the theorists producing a bit of, uh, you know, experience for us as well. Spanish Civil War has started. Uh, unfortunately, we are not able to send any advisors. Uh, we're not able to send anything to Republic of Spain. There's no way for us to assist them. We can't send them uh, any volunteers because uh, we don't have 30 divisions. You know, we might be able to do the attack. Yeah, we could actually do this uh, for more experience if we wanted to. This would give us uh, a bit of war support too. Uh, they would not accept it though, so it's irrelevant. Never mind. I guess they don't value Chinese uh, Chinese generals. Well, they will learn eventually. Everybody will learn once uh, we accomplish our goals. So our goals for this campaign, I sometimes forget to talk about this in the first episode. I end up having a lot of people ask. Uh, so the goals for this campaign are to let's just go and pull these guys out. Is to gain control, complete control of China, push Japan off of the continent. Pretty traditional goals, I suppose. We've got a storm going on right now, so forgive the uh, thunder in the background. It's getting kind of loud. Uh, it's just been storming for the last, good God, two months now. Just rains here in Colorado. It's just every other day, probably, two to maybe two out of every three days. It's just a lot of rain lately. Uh, but anyways, what I was saying is uh, we might also go ahead and uh, try and push the Europeans uh, out of this area as well, specifically France. I uh, kind of want Indochina back in... Chinese imperial hands, although I guess we're not really imperial, we're communists, but y'all know what I mean. So we've got that one knocked out. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of the power struggles. I really think that'd be useful. This one's pretty dang good too, because it helps us produce that infantry equipment a lot faster, which is something that we are currently lacking. Lacking a lot of infantry equipment right now. Seems our units are yeah, not doing well on that. We don't have the experience at this point, so let's just go ahead and get rid of the training army for right now. I guess I could have just stopped him from training. Yeah, I suppose it doesn't really matter. All right, so we've got two of these knocked out. Uh, so let's go ahead and get, I guess we'll do construction next here. Uh, we have the mechanical computing knocked out as well. And reinforce rate would be super useful to have uh, in that one border conflict. So I think we will go for that. Yeah, let's go for the reinforce rate with the radios. Can't modify our government now, and we're going to want to get these down here since uh, these ones are all still kind of expensive. Can't get that one, but we don't have the military intelligence department. Yeah, we won't be able to get that guy. Yeah, I don't see the point on uh, paying the extra 37 political power for these. Uh, just kind of a waste. Might as well uh, wait and get uh, the military staff done, something I typically don't do too much later because I don't think we can do any of these. I looked at this before, but I didn't look at all of them. I want to double check how oh, we're not getting planes or ships. Yeah, you can't get any of these until you have either certain focuses or certain states under your control. So we're pretty limited in that regards. Uh, we want to get our chief of army first. And we have a lot of choices here. Uh, this one you can't get unless you go down that German route. Uh, so that's not an option. Uh, it's a pretty good one. Division attack. Can't get that. Uh, we can't get the recovery rate. Yeah, I don't want him. Army experience gains limited. I, I really feel like division recovery rate is what we're going to want to go here. Uh, but let's just take a look at the... Uh, military high command and see what options we have available here another division recovery rate interesting okay um like i know i'm gonna go we're probably gonna go with division attrition and of course attack and defense yeah and i'm not sure what the other guy we're gonna go with is just yet i don't know if we want to go for division recovery rate since we already have that that bonus trench run speed can be useful probably not gonna have a lot of armor though yeah a lot of these aren't aren't gonna be all that useful Let's get the chief army first with the division recovery rate. All right, awesome. That'll be helpful. Okay, uh, so still not enough experience yet to really make any adjustments to our units. So now we're just kind of taking this opportunity to build to you know build up equip infantry equipment since we are lacking that. Oh wait a minute, you know what? We can actually we have a slot open here, uh, so we could go ahead and get something building there. This is not going to be completed till the 20th of February. I don't think there's any point in waiting on that. Let me just take a look. We want another military factory right yeah we want another military factory here how long would it take to get that done that wouldn't be done till april but it's so useful yeah i think we should go ahead and, and grab it first and remember we are also getting rid of uh well we already got rid of that never mind i was gonna say the construction penalty yeah we already got rid of half of that and i don't know when we get rid of the next one i think it's somewhere down this branch here 
you just take a look here. Yeah, it's, it's all the way down here. And I think there's a lot of things limiting you going that route. So we might not get, a, get rid of that for a while. Uh, do got better infantry equipment we can start building. Uh, we could also go ahead and start getting the artillery. Give ourselves a nice boost for our units. I think that would be super useful. And we can also start working on our uh, land doctrine too. But you know what? Let's go ahead and go down the artillery route. Though support equipment, hmm. You know what? Actually, let's do support equipment first. Let's get that knocked out. Uh, and we need to change up the infantry equipment. All right, so we'll have better infantry equipment going to our units eventually. And that'll help in the little border conflict. I don't know when we'll we'll conduct this, guys. It's probably gonna be a little while. Uh, we're not we're not ready at all. I don't think they're getting stronger too as they go. Uh, so that's something to consider. Uh, but yeah, our divisions are terrible. They don't even have any infantry equipment. And it does take political power to do this. So from what I read, you don't want to waste it uh, early on to do it because you always lose. Um, you know, again, I'm just going off other people's comments since I have no experience with it. But from my understanding is if you do it early, you just you just lose it. Uh, so it's a waste of political power. So we could do this one so we can get infantry equipment faster. Also, national disability is always useful. You know, it gives you some nice bonuses, as you can see there. Or we can go ahead and start going down one of these two routes. Um, this will give us another building slot so we can build something else there. Yeah, I don't think we'll do that just yet. Uh, the two off-map uh, off civilian factories, you know what? That would be super helpful. Let me just see here. So both of these are, are pretty good. I think what we're going to do is I want to focus on getting the equipment built first since we're so short. So we'll get that one first, and then we'll work on uh, the next the next focus uh, to get those off map the two off map civilian factories so we can build a little bit faster. Because as you can see, we are building super super slow. Uh, April just to get this one military factory done because we only have the the three civilian factories at the moment with a 35% penalty to construction speed from that uh, national spirit and the fact that we're on service by requirement. So yeah, pretty garbage overall. Uh, next time we change up our division designs, we'll be able to make two adjustments, uh, which would be to add, uh, probably add something to like a support company. Although I don't know that we'll have any support companies available initially because yeah, we don't even have artillery. Uh, can't go ahead and get something for our government. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get another military high command. Although we did get rid of the power struggles, didn't we? We did. So now we could go ahead and get one of these. Yeah, that's exactly what we'll do. We're going to get the war industrialist. So we can build those military factories a lot quicker. I want to get the captain of industry. That does require the socialist market economy. We'll look at that in a minute. And that's the main one that I would want. Yeah, it's the main one we want. All right, let's go over the war industrialist. We can build military factories quicker. Now to look at that focus, that's way down here, guys. And as I said, there are requirements in order to get there uh, that I think require us at war. So to get two research uh, done, I do want to take a look at how much quicker we'll do these uh, factory. Uh, sped it up by about a month and a little bit more, a little bit more than a month. So it's helpful. Uh, we'll get it here soon. Uh, so we got the radios. Uh, we're not gonna go with the radio detection. Uh, we're not gonna be able to build radar stations right now. Uh, and they wouldn't be all that helpful to us anyways. Uh, that'd be a little bit helpful, but yeah, uh, not enough to warrant getting those. Let's go with Concentrated Industry 2. I think that's the first thing we should knock out here. We did get support equipment as well. We're gonna keep one of these uh, research slots focused on getting us stuff for our units. Uh, so now that we have the support equipment, we can go ahead and go with engineer companies or, um, yeah, I think I think that's what we're gonna go for, in fact. Let's go with engineer companies. Uh, really good bonuses here, of course. I love engineer companies. And they help us entrench too. So pretty useful for our units. Could make an adjustment to the division designs here if we wanted to, but I want to save the experience for getting the uh, getting the support battalion because yeah, we don't have anything available here just yet. Uh, we got Maoism, the national focus completed, uh, which increased our stability, giving us those benefits. And also uh, we build infantry equipment a lot faster. Uh, so we're not gonna do that one at this moment. Uh, let's go ahead and work on, do you want to take a look and see what all these ones do here? Let's go ahead and go, what's, let me just see here. What's the low popular support here? Okay, stability and war support, not that big of an issue. All right, let's go and go with the invite foreign investors, as I said before, to get those two off map civilian factories and let us build, you know, a lot quicker. This is March, 1938, by the way. It was like a whole year away. That is a lot further away than I was thinking. 
Hmm. I almost want to go ahead and finish that then. Probably should have kept go kept it going. I suppose it's fine. It, it doesn't really make that much of an improvement, honestly, on your your actual speed of construction. Really, we just need to get rid of some of these penalties uh, to our construction speed, and also we need to get more civilian factories. Did get construction one, uh, and that's also going to help us build faster, so helpful. Uh, and we can go and get excavation, though I don't think that would improve our resource situation much. And we're not really short all that much anyways. Um, I think getting the steel would be useful, but I wonder... Yeah, I, I just don't think that's going to be as useful as getting like improved machine tools or construction two at this moment. Yeah, so I think we're going to wait for that. I usually go for it right after, but with our current situation... I don't think that would be the best thing to do. Uh, so as I said, we're only halfway through the episode and we've already made it you know, well through 1936 and into halfway through 37. So I said we should be able to make at least a year and a half, but yeah, two years is, yeah, we'll probably get through two years, maybe a bit longer than that. Uh, that's, that's one of the nice things about the smaller countries is because you got a lot less to do and manage. Uh, you get to the war a little bit quicker and get to the conflict. You can just kind of speed this up and, and fly through it uh, relatively quickly. So, let's take a look. What all happened here is we got our national focus. Ching K Shek arrested. And I do apologize for my terrible pronunciation of Chinese names and words. I'm gonna just butcher this through the whole series. Uh, so, um, we've been sent a message uh, that Ching has been arrested and they're willing to turn him over to us. This may be the best chance we have to execute this, execute this enemy of the people. So we can ask the Soviets for approval. Uh, we can say off of his head and he will be dead and he that will be replaced as the leader and we now uh oh they'll gain a china will gain an annexation war goal against us we should ally with him against the japanese uh, so we propose an alliance here or we can say killing him now will lead to a war we cannot win let him go all right well yeah we definitely don't want to fight them at this moment um you know obviously japan's the real threat uh, eventually we want to deal with the civil war here in China, but that's not the immediate uh, threat. I think we should ally with China uh, against Japan. I think that's our best um, chance of survival against the Japanese, honestly. Uh, we could attack China in the back, uh, but but Japan is so powerful uh, that that typically doesn't work out well. Yeah, it just exhausts you, exhausts both Chinas uh, when they're fighting each other and Japan. So I think we should ally with them uh, initially, go down the historical route and, and work together. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. I don't know. I've never seen that event before, so there might have been uh, better options to choose there. Killing him might have had some things that I don't, you know, effects that I, I'm not aware of. I'd love to hear about those in the comments if you're aware of them. Uh, but yeah, it's not. Um, oh, and Japan is now just fine against us because, uh, yeah, we're now on the Chinese United Front, as you can see here. Uh, we have allied together. And Japan is now uh, working on the Marco Polo Bridge incident. So in this particular case, we're going to want to send some troops to help them uh, soon. We'll see where the threat is needed. Obviously, you're going to need them here. I want to say that AI J Japan... Yeah, AI Japan is programmed to not do naval invasions of AI China, uh, for, I think, for several years into the game. But I don't know if that will apply with us being communist China, because it doesn't apply when it's AI Japan against human China. And that's just to help human China out because, or excuse me, that's just to help AI uh, China out because they do such a terrible job protecting their ports. As you can see here, the ports are wide open. Uh, they only really protect the border. So they end up losing like way faster than they do historically when Japan invades them. Uh, so that does uh, give a nice little benefit for our side, unless that doesn't apply because we are in fact one of the Chinese factions. I don't know how that works, honestly. Uh, so... We could send some assistance up here and to stop the Chinese from advancing. I think that'll probably be what we do, actually. Yeah, uh, we'll probably send some troops up there soon. Let's go ahead and invite foreign investors, or finish, uh, excuse me, uh, we already invited foreign investors, got those civilian uh, factories, and we could do the mission to the Soviet Union, but as I said, these do not give a lot of bonuses. They give some. It's not that they're terrible. They're just not great. A lot of these bonuses are for, you know, armor, which is not something we're going to specialize in. So it's really not, not a great route to go down early on. Uh, it'll be something we do a bit later. Can uh, create the, the factions here. That doesn't help us at all uh, at this moment. Uh, we can proclaim ourselves the People's Republic. Again, doesn't help us, and we can't do that anyways until we're at war. And this is the one we want to get, uh, but that's just not a route. So we can ignore that branch for now. 
that allow us to start focusing on these focuses here. This is an increased uh, infrastructure and building slot, which we're trying to build that anyway, so it is helpful. Uh, war support would be nice to have uh, as well. Here's what we'll do. We'll go down this route first because I would like to get this bonus for the attack and defense on core territory because that area we're going to be fighting on is core territory of communist China, so that does help us. Uh, and then I think I think that's all we'll, we'll probably initially do, and then we'll start going down this route. Uh, so let's get this one. And that helps us too because we can build you know more stuff over here. And remember, we do have more civilian factories, so now we're going to get this in the 12th of October. And that's the last building slot I think that we have right now. Yeah, so would be beneficial to to get that. It helps us build faster too because it's infrastructure, uh, two infrastructure. And the Chinese United Front has formed. Excellent, an alliance of desperation. Now we need to get the all the warlords into the faction. Uh, U.S. Congress did pass the Neutrality Act. Since they're on the historical route, they're going to probably take a long time to get into the conflict, as uh, they did historically. They're going to go down that route. Uh, and I assume Britain will go with the appeasement as well. They're getting extra research a lot at this moment. Just look at what everybody's doing. All right, excellent. So uh, we have another uh, country joining the faction. Uh, so... That's uh, very good. Uh, we're going to need borders up on here. Uh, so do we want to send our troops now? Uh, they're going to be getting this soon. Let me just take a look here. Uh, we could make that adjustment. Did we ever finish with... No, we didn't finish with the engineer companies yet. I don't want to send our troops into war too early, into the conflict too early. I do want to help out here on this border. I'm a little bit worried about... And we could maybe get them knocked out early. I'm a little bit worried about attrition, so that's something to consider. But I think we're going to go ahead and... and Send the troops over there now. Even though we still got a lot of adjustments to make. I suppose that's fine. Yeah. Let's go and at least send them over to, you know, somewhere here. Let me take a look at the uh, supply zones. All right, so that's a supply zone. Probably pretty limited supply, but our eight divisions shouldn't soak up too much of it. I guess we'll find out here soon. Uh, we're going to send them over there so that at least they're close to the fight. Uh, let's go and get a general selected as well. Uh, so... This, yeah, he would easily be the best one uh, for us. Uh, very good stats here. You know, obviously the best skill, but most importantly, he has the mountaineer trait, uh, which we're going to be fighting in the mountains. Uh, so, yeah, super useful uh, to have here initially. A lot of the generals have the mountaineer trait, um, you know, for obvious reasons. <laughs> Looking at their terrain and how things happen historically. Uh, so let's go ahead and select the general. We're going to want to go ahead and give them the field marshal as well. We only have one, oops, only have one option uh, for that. So... Let's get Mao selected, and I believe Mao has, yeah, the charismatic trait we can grab. So we'll get the charismatic trait. I don't know that I want to go for organization first, though. 2% uh, reinforce rate is, is not bad, of course, and it's helpful, but at the same time, we already got a reinforce rate bonus. And once he gets a trait available, which does take a while for Phil Marshalls, there's some great bonuses here. So I almost want to go ahead and see how he's doing on trait game before we go after that, because I'd like to be able to get something else. Uh, for him, so I think it's fine if we don't don't uh, get that last one. Let's just have them. You know, I'm not gonna give them. Let's just bring them over here. Put them on the railroads, and we're not gonna put them on the border just yet. We do have a little bit of time, and we're gonna be making an adjustment to these division designs very soon. There we go. Uh, so we're gonna be changing these guys up. They're not taking attrition here, so that's good to see. Let's go ahead and edit up this division design. Uh, we don't have the engineers yet. Damn it! I thought we did. Not yet, but we can go ahead and add in the uh, next battalion. So let's go ahead and do that now. Next infantry battalion. That puts us at 20 combat width as of right now. And we still have 10 experience to make the adjustments once we get the engineer companies. And we are going to want to get these guys training now uh, since they're going to lose their experience, of course. Uh, so, yeah, they, they tick down a little bit. It's not too bad, though. And we do have a decision available. Uh, oh, that means I'm not going to be able to do this, though. Yeah, that's a shame. And yeah, more than likely, we won't be able to do this with me over there. Hmm. Yeah, I did want to do that. I would like to get control of that if possible. I didn't think about that. But I don't want Japan, you know, pushing in here. I think there's enough troops up here to hold it. So you know what? We're coming back. Coming back, guys. I know I'm looking all indecisive and shit, but I completely forgot about this. We do need to, to knock this out. So pretty much as soon as they get... I wanted to get them engineer companies, but yeah, we'll have to see... We're going to be over here in a, uh, our own little conflict while everybody else is fighting Japan. That's essentially what's going to end up happening here. 
because this is kind of important for us. We can't modify our government, so let's go ahead and do that. I uh, can't get the one I want here, and there's not really any good options that are actually beneficial to us. Yeah, not really any at all. Uh, stability, I suppose, is helpful, but yeah, it's not going to be too much of a problem. We're at 71%, and we got a lot of uh, national focuses that modify that. So instead, let's go ahead and go after another military staff, uh, one of the military high command that will immediately help us, the infantry division attack and defense. And yeah, we'll get this started as soon as I get this research. How much longer do we have? Oh, good God, it's 29 days. All right, I wasn't expecting that to take so long. And yeah, they're about to have the Marco Polo Bridge incident. I don't know if you can do that while at war. I really don't uh, know if we'll be able to change that. Excuse me, let me go back to the decisions here. That's what I meant to click on. I don't know if you can do this at wall while, while uh, at war. So let's just take a look. You got to have, or you don't have a, a non-aggression pact with them. Now we don't go to war. We don't do it immediately. We do have a bit of time before it happens. So we could do it soon here. That's exactly what we'll do. We'll do it here in about 10 or 15 days. Let me just watch when we're about, about 10, 10 more days out. Just trying to time this as best as possible. I don't know, guys. I don't know how well this is going to work out. I really want that state, but we might not be able to get it. We might just have to give up on it. But you know what? I'm, I'm willing to, to use the political power that we don't have. <laughs> yeah, we don't have the political power. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't think about the fact that we don't have a little power. All right, we're just going to have to wait. Uh, so we've got this one knocked out. And we'll just have to see if we can do it while at war. I don't I don't know if you can or not. I didn't see anything about that. But if they join the, the faction, uh, then obviously we wouldn't be able to do it. We're going to keep our troops here. Uh, as you see, the border's well defended. I would like to have my troops here so that I can send some that way. Try and go after this capital here early on. Maybe we can even get them knocked out uh, really early. Um, that's not going to be an option if I wait. What is it to see, guys? I'm not gonna I'm not sending them over there. This is more important getting this state because you can see we're so tiny. So getting like this state, you know, doubles our size. It's pretty important for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait uh, to do that because there's more space to build and, and all that good stuff. Let's go to the focus on China. That'll be useful. Uh, I got leadership purges in the Soviet Union. So now we're just waiting on the political power at this point. And Japan did just declare war on China, which is gonna bring us into the conflict as well, or they're gonna request that we come in. And I don't really see any reason to to join just yet. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna actually decline that uh, so that I can make sure that I can do this. Yeah, because I, I mean, also it depends on if they get pulled into the faction. If they get pulled into the faction, then we'll just join the war. All right, so, so uh, Japan is now uh, attacking and looks like we're, for the most part, winning. I would love to have some... Yeah, you can see that they, they did take advantage of that opening there and took the capital already. Oh, no, they didn't. Here's the opening here. They're doing great. Yeah, they're not doing bad. All right, so we got the improved machine tools. Uh, let's go after... Well, we already have one going here, and you know what? We really need to get artillery. Uh, we're really lacking on that. And support weapons would be super useful to have as well here early on. Well, artillery, we have to build less support weapons gives you an immediate bonus, so we'll go with that. And yeah, they're all going to call us into the conflict, but we're not going to join just yet. We are being greedy and thinking about ourselves. <laughs> we did get the concentrated industry. Um, let's go out to construction too next. Uh, we've got the engineer companies as well. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, we need to get the motorized to go after the next one I want, field hospitals. Yeah, I think that'd be the next one to be beneficial for us. So yeah, we'd have to get the motorized. So instead of getting motorized, which don't help us at all immediately, let's go in and get the artillery. Get that first so we can start building that. Uh, how are we doing on our equipment? 684. Uh, so still wouldn't be able to build any units yet. I know some people are gonna be like, oh, why aren't you building units? I'd prefer to get equipment for all my units that are actually in the field. And, oh Lord. So they have now, um, these guys have joined into the Chinese United Front. They have not yet. Uh, it's, you don't have a lot of time. We're still trying to get the 100 political power so I can enact that decision. We're at 95 right now. Almost there, guys. Come on. All right. Let's go and get it uh, knocked out. And it takes 30 days uh, before you're able to do it. Uh, as far as... Oh, I never added these two here. God damn it. I waited to do this, and then I didn't even add them in. Psh. That's so stupid. Hopefully they can train in 30 days. I don't know that they'll lose a lot of... Yeah, they didn't lose a lot of experience. Uh, so it's not that big of a deal. 
All right, and we're almost done. There we go. All right, let's stop the training so they get the organization up before this is, uh, takes place in 20 days. It ended up working out all right. Should be able to get the organization back up. They don't have their equipment yet. We do actually need to start producing some support equipment now uh, because we do need a little bit. We don't really have any military factories, though. Uh, I thought we had... Maybe we didn't build that yet. Yeah, we didn't build it yet. Okay. So, yeah, it doesn't help us anyway since we don't have the support equipment. We're going to have to ignore these for right now. Just for right now. Uh, it looks like National Spain did beat the Republicans, unfortunately. All right, that's a shame. They seem to always win now. Um, well, let me take that back. The Republicans were winning for a long time, and then an adjustment was made that, that made it so National Spain win a lot more. And that's good. Uh, I'd rather have that happen... Um, you know, the historical outcome happened than what was happening before, where... Oh, damn it. God damn it. <laughs> well, I guess we'll see what happens now. I, I don't think we can do it. I think that nullifies it. I don't know. We'll see. We might have got it just in time. I really hope so. And if they send the divisions, I might have less divisions to, to, to deal with this. We'll see. We'll see if our greedy... Uh, the greedy thing worked. It might not have. I don't know, guys. It might have gotten... Because... Yeah, we might not be able to do it because we're in the same faction now. Damn it. Alright, I was trying to do it, and it didn't work. That's a shame. I was trying to knock it out there at the last minute. It does seem it, it, it's not going to work. Yeah, because there's a, normally a thing that pops up, I think, that you have to take. Alright, so... Yeah, that's really unfortunate, man. We did all that, and then we didn't even get to, to do it. And now this is no longer open. Alright, they've lost Beijing as well. Okay, this is what we'll do. Let's create a front here to kind of help out to try and go after this since they look kind of weak there. And then we're going to have the rest go over here to try and gain Beijing back. Or at the very least, defend across this river here. Uh, get that nice river uh, bonus. Yeah, it's just a real shame that it didn't work out the way I was I was wanting it to. Alright, so I'm gonna, we're going to create a little front here. And then create a, a front here, right here as well. And then we're just going to sign a, a few divisions up to this one. Yeah, like two up to that one see if they can help out there there's not a lot of japanese defi divisions defending there so that might be enough so we're going to want to also go ahead and give uh some nice bonuses for planning as well and why is nobody selected on that one? Oh lord that went from that border my bad let's do that again there we go all right everybody get a nice planning bonus We'll come over here and help out, see if we can't uh, push forward here uh, into Japanese territory. I'd really like to get get Beijing back into our hands, because that's, that's pretty important for China. A lot of uh, factories there. Uh, we did get the focus on China knocked out. Excellent. So that gives us a nice bonus uh, for fighting on core territory. Uh, could get more war support here, which, uh, again, gives those division attacks on core territory. That's the main thing that we'd, we'd want uh, early on there. Uh, but I think this will also help us bring in the warlords. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but I think it would be better to go this route at this point. I wanted to focus on China. We got that. Let's go down here. Uh, those give much better bonuses for war support and stability, uh, that branch. All right, so our troops are over here. Uh, we could fight at any moment now. Um, we, we wouldn't win attacking Beijing. We already know that that's a loss right there. Uh, so no point on uh, attacking there. Uh, we are not in the war yet. Uh, so we do need to go ahead and, and join their conflict. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now. All right. So that we can actually help in, like, that defense and stuff. All right. So we're now into the war. Awesome. A lot more troops over here at this point. Um, so we'll attempt an attack here. Or maybe we should wait till our planning bonus gets up just a little bit before we do. Yeah, let's let's get the planning bonus up just a little bit, and then we'll do the attack. Uh, so we have uh, bypassed the anti-Japanese expedition, as well as government and national defense, and prepare for war for Japan, since, uh, you know, we're already in, involved in all that. So yeah, that has knocked out these two here, and uh, that does tick up the, the war support, I think, as well. If I'm not mistaken, I think you get the bonuses from that. So yeah, now we can do the con uh, confrontation with the warlords after we finish up this one if we wanted to. And yeah, we'll put a go after this one. Not yet, anyways. As far as other bonuses it gives, there's really not a lot here. No, not really. 
So we'll probably start going down that third branch all the way on the right there. Uh, we can't do war bonds and the industrial land appropriation. Uh, we're not going to want to do any of those right now because we don't want to use our political power on these. And where's the other one? War bonds. Yeah, we're not going to do the, any of these right now. We need to spend our political power on other things. Uh, Yunnan just joined the Chinese front. Excellent. All right. So everybody's joining together. I think there's just one warlord left to join. And uh, we'll have all of China into the conflict. Uh, we are not interested in doing war propaganda right now. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and close all that. Not interested in that at the moment. And let's take a look at our playing bonus and see if we're up there. Uh, looks like we are there. All right, fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna attempt an attack here. It's probably gonna fail miserably. I just wanna see how we look. Yeah, it's terrible. All right, so even with a little bit of assist there, uh, we need help from the other Chinese uh, divisions there. So we won't be able to do that. Mostly just gonna be on the defense at this point. It's kinda trying to help defend Chinese territory. Uh, the best that we can. Uh, it does look like we should probably send a division over this way. Kind of help out here. And then we'll attack right there. Just try and help out the defense as best as possible. Our general was wounded. Damn. Alright, so for 90 days we're not going to get any benefits from him. Uh, we have the emergency factory conversion that we're not interested in doing. Uh, how long until we have this constructed? The 15th of December. Okay. Uh, so, it's going to be a little while. We're going to stay on speed 5 because there's really not... A lot going on um, you know that we need to directly control right now just kind of got to build up our army a bit how are we doing on equipment we're doing okay now we could go ahead and start constructing some units or we can go ahead and change up that division design even more uh, and I think that's what we'll do we're still waiting on artillery but we could get more uh, infantry battalions uh, to help these guys out a bit uh, build up their their numbers and I think that's what we'll do we'll just keep building up I prefer to have better divisions uh, at this point uh, than to have uh, a bunch of divisions. I think that would be more useful to us at the moment. Uh, so, And we're already going to be above the 20 combat width, so might as well go ahead and try and get to 40 as soon as we can. Uh, so let's go ahead and start just pumping uh, you know, battalions into these, these eight divisions we have. I would like to get two more trained up, though. Maybe we'll get those started, but they're not going to have any equipment, so yeah, not going to be able to do much with that. When do we get the artillery? Let me just take a look here. Maybe we want to wait to, to make adjustments. We get that in 20 days. Okay, this is what we'll do. We'll get two more divisions uh, trained up here, guys. Again, though, they're not gonna, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, as you can see, they need a lot of equipment here, uh, so it's going to take a while. Yeah, we'll just keep on constructing uh, infantry equipment and staying on the defense, keeping the Japanese from getting more territory. This here, uh, we saved this province here uh, that was ticking red, and we stopped them. So we're doing our part. And China's just going to like be throwing away uh, you know, manpower and equipment on these stupid, stupid attacks here. Uh, luckily, China has a ton of manpower, so that's not too much of an issue. I'm a little bit concerned about uh, the fact that equipment is often an issue for them, though. Uh, so far, their strength looks pretty good, though, so could become a problem later on. Uh, so we're still in 1937. Uh, I'm not going to go for the 1938 text just yet. We got that nice weapon bonus. So what do we want to get next? Could, could go ahead and start going down land, land doctrines. I know mass assault doctrine is terrible, guys. It's the worst of the four doctrines. Uh, easily the worst of the four doctrines. But, despite that fact, I think I'm going to go down uh, mass assault doctrine as a role play type of thing. Uh, and there are some pretty good stuff here, guys, um, for China. It's not a terrible one. Uh, it's just not as good as the other three. Um, I don't know. I, I, we're not going to go for it yet, because obviously these take a really long time to research. And uh, there's stuff that's more immediately beneficial to us uh, with our limited uh, research slots. Uh, so we're not going to go for this yet. However, and plus, yeah, we can later use experience for this too. Once we have our divisions designed, we can, you know, speed it up a lot with experience. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I think we're going to go for Mass Assault just because it's, just cause it's uh, good for roleplay purposes and there's some nice bonuses. Just kind of show you, there's the two different routes, the you know, the Russian-Soviet route uh, down here. And then, of course, the mass mobilization, which is China's route. Uh, so just kind of showing you guys some of the bonuses. Uh, one of the great things is, of course, recruitable population. We do have limited population until we get more control of more states through those infiltration decisions. Uh, so as of right now, we don't have a lot of manpower, so that does help a lot. And then I also like that the infantry combat width is reduced. It allows us our 40 width division designs to be just absolutely massive. Uh, they'll have so many troops, which is kind of cool. 
Uh, so that's one route, but this is kind of the, the worst of the ones. Deep Battle's pretty good. It's got some great bonuses. A lot of these do apply to tanks, though. Uh, but even when you take out the, the tank ones that we might not use, there's still some great stuff along this route. So yeah, I think we're going to go this way just for the... Uh, just for the, the role play of it, and we never go down Mass Assault Doctrine. I think I've gone down it maybe once the entire time uh, I've been doing this series on YouTube. I don't know, guys. Obviously, Mobile Warfare is not beneficial to us. Um, the Superior Firepower is a pretty good one, I feel, for China. Uh, it's got good leg infantry bonuses, uh, and then also lots of bonuses for artillery. Uh, so both things that we're going to be using. Uh, the sh it gets a little bit, you know, not as good uh, for our particular style here uh, as you kind of go down, but still really great bonuses for infantry and artillery. It would probably be the best route for us to go, honestly. Uh, this one gives us some really good bonuses too, though, with the planning and the entrenchment. Uh, so this would be a good one to go for uh, for China as well. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to go down uh, Mass Assault for, for role play purposes, but not yet. I just wanted to mention that here in this first episode since we are getting kind of close close to the end. Uh, so for this, uh, this one, I think we're going to go with Motorized. Uh, because we have those uh, those other support companies I want to get. Yeah, so that's what we'll do. Uh, let's go with the motorized. Uh, you know, they won't provide any benefit to us immediately, but that's okay. Uh, we are getting offers of Lend Lease, and we'll go and take that. Yeah, sure, from Mongolia. That'd be helpful. Anything we can get is helpful. Uh, we got the Toad tar Artillery knocked out as well. Excellent. Uh, do we want to go ahead and... Nah, I don't think we do. I almost want to just go ahead and start working on the, the infantry equipment bonus. We don't have the artillery built yet, so not going to be uh, good to get a bonus for that right now. Let's go with the infantry, the improved infantry equipment. I think that'd be the most immediately beneficial to us. Uh, so we'll get that, and we're close enough to 1938, I suppose. We do need uh, to go ahead and start constructing artillery, but again, we're lacking. Uh, did we? Oh, you know what? We're in, we passed October. My bad, and I can't figure out the damn hotkeys either. Uh, so we're almost done with this, so we'll finish it up. And let me just take a look here. Huh. I thought we had gotten two infrastructure from that national focus. That did not give us any infrastructure, though, from what I'm seeing. Huh. Okay. Well, we'll get this one going, and then we're going to do the military factory. Uh, get more military factories here. I should have had that building already, but it's fine. Oh, wait. That's my bad. I said I was going to finish that. It might as well, because it's like a matter of weeks, and it gives us a little bit of bonus so we can build that military factory a little bit quicker. So go ahead and do that. Uh, looking at our equipment situation here. Uh, oh, yes, we can also add... Well, we don't have any artillery yet, so there's really no point on, on attempting to put those into those units just yet. We are losing here. We're going to have to now... We're just going to have to flip-flop these divisions as we go here. Uh, we're also having supply problems here might be a good argument to send another division up there like this guy so maybe we can uh i don't know maybe we can do something there is this all the same supply region yeah it is so it would be beneficial to get a division out not much though uh, i'm forced to three rules because really uh, a lot of this problem is caused by their divisions so let me just take a look at what we want to get next confrontation uh confrontation with the warlords uh, there's only one warlord that hasn't come in I would assume that our ally is going to be doing that. So I don't know if it's worth it waiting, wasting a focus on it. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do that yet, Shep. Let's continue down this route, actually. Uh, and we are going to ban the opium trade. Yeah, I think that would be the, for the best. Get that base stability. Uh, and we have a decision available, which is Institute Press Censorship, which we're not interested in doing. Instead, we're going to use that political power to modify our government, uh, which would be... Let me just take a look here. Could we have done... Let me just take a look. Can we do this one? Not yet. We need 49 factories, so it's going to be a while uh, if we're able to do that one, unfortunately. Yeah, it's such a bummer we weren't able to gain control of that state. I just wasn't quick enough with it. But as I said before, you don't want to do it too early. Um, yeah, because you end up losing it and you just waste the political power. Uh, that's what I read, anyways. I'd love to hear how you guys deal with deal with those so let's get the next military high command which i don't remember which one i said i was going to go for i think we're going to do a division attrition actually you see we're already having some attrition problems it's really not something that we want it's not a lot uh but yeah we don't want any attrition and italy might declare war on yugoslavia all right uh, so we moved another division there it might not be enough yeah they're attacking with several divisions there what to see 
doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Uh, we'll have to, like, uh, you know, slowly kind of rotate divisions to make sure that we keep keep somebody in the fight at all times. Make sure we don't lose that province. If we can, if we can keep them. Uh, what is that to see? But, again, this would be the better point to defend here uh, across the river. So if we do have to go down there, that's fine. But let's fight them as hard as we can before we give up any territory. And it looks like... It's not, our troops aren't even really fighting yet. Uh, we haven't even reinforced yet at this point. It's mostly their troops fighting. And yeah, we are having some difficulty in that fight. All right, let's go ahead and keep rotating these guys in. Bring this guy over here. Let's try and keep dudes in the fight. And that, now it is green, and that's without our division. All right, awesome. So it looks like we have a, uh, we saved the day. I'm gonna take credit for that. We'll see if we can attack here as well. Probably not. Even with assistance, it doesn't look like that's good enough. All right, let's not waste the equipment. Uh, we have so little of it. All right, so we got our construction uh, done. Uh, so starting to have resource issues. Uh, so we should probably go ahead and get the excavation next. And we might want to go ahead and trade for that steel as well, just because we can't be... It just sucks that we have so few civilian factories, man. Oh, we need to switch these out. My bad. Uh, that was two weeks I wasted on that. Shit. Not running the most efficient. That's part of going at speed five. Uh, everybody always gripes. So, you know, if I, I go at a slower speed... Uh, you know, everybody wants me to go speed five the whole time. When you go at speed five, yeah, you fly through it quicker. As you can see, we're two years in, uh, but I miss stuff. Like when I'm paying attention, once we get into war, of course, obviously you want to go speed five once you're in peace. But yeah, once you go to war, you can see we're missing things uh, because I'm watching stuff here and and so uh, not running the most efficient. Maybe going to speed four might be better. I don't know. Uh, so let's go and trade uh, for some, what did we want? Steel. Uh, we'll trade with... More than likely, I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as we don't have to do convoys. Uh, we can't do convoys anyway. We don't have ports. Uh, let's trade with the Soviet Union. I hate that we have to give a civilian factory away, uh, but we don't want to be hurting our production uh, at all if we can avoid it. Uh, you know, the, you can see the, the production for the support equipment is, is taking a nice little hit here. Uh, so, yes, 10%. So that'll be helpful. Now it's only 5%. Uh, so we can get that support equipment building a little bit quicker. Because uh, that's the main thing that we're lacking here. Can't get any artillery built just yet. What is that the weight? It's fine. It's fine. We have such limited resources, guys. It's just kind of the way it is. Let's go ahead and send another division over here. Try to make sure we don't lose that. Uh, it doesn't really feel like our divisions are helping that much at this point. Uh, yeah. Not really. Let's keep on rotating them in, though. I'll try and keep it. But yeah, it does look like we are more than likely going to lose it. And how are we doing on the resources now? Is it still just... Yeah, it's just the aluminum. Alright, so we're getting close to the end of the episode here, guys. And uh, really just on the defense. Hardcore on the defense right now. Trying to defend against the Japanese. And, and hope that they don't do any naval invasions. Because if they do, then uh, China's screwed. Alright, uh, Austria has been annexed. And the opium trade has been banned. Alright, so let's go with the abolishing the land rent. Though... Doesn't help a war support, because that's already at 100%. It would help with stability, though, but not by much. It would only get us up to 60%. But you know what? I think that's probably the best thing to get at this moment. Yeah, let's go in and knock this out. At least we'll know that this branch is done. We don't have to worry about it anymore. All right. So still holding out here. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and continue sending divisions in. Uh, who are these guys that need training? Oh, they're up here. Uh, so you know what? Let's go ahead and put these guys into a little separate army and just kind of move them over here and then have them train. Gives us experience, but, you know, most importantly, it, uh, you know, make sure we get those those nice bonuses. Uh, keep our guys trained up if we can. Uh, we have the ability to do that since there's so many uh, allied divisions over here. So let's go ahead and try rotating more, uh, more units in this province. They haven't been attacking this one, so I feel it's worth it sending all our divisions over there. Just try and hold it as long as possible. This will give them a closer airbase. That's the main thing that we're really defending at this point. Uh, but really, it'd probably be best if we did lose it so that the... Uh... Though I think if they take that, they get any factories. So there's also that to consider. If they win this, then they completely surround this province and they'll they'll easily take it from us. So there is also other things to consider, the, the factories there. Uh, we did get the... Uh, I knew that this would get bypassed. The AI did do it. Excellent. Uh, so we didn't waste the political power on that. So that'll now allow us to go down here to get more maximum command power. Uh, as far as our command power, I mean, there's not really much that we can we can do with that at the moment. We're just kind of hoping that these guys get some some new traits. 
I almost want to go for this to get the reinforce rate because I just don't know that he'll get anything else. They 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 get it so slow, uh, really. So maybe getting the organization, uh, excuse me, the uh, uh, reinforce rate would be beneficial because yeah, I don't know that we'll get the the organizer. Uh, they typically do. Field marshals will get the organizer and then it'll get you these bonuses here. Uh, but yeah, it does take take a long time to get it. So you know what? Let's go with the organization first. Might as well. And we have nothing else to spend our political power on. Because, uh, yeah, we don't really have an Air Force or anything. As you can see, we don't, we don't have any planes. So, yeah, there's not really... That's what you typically use it for. Uh, these guys are done, so we can throw them back onto that front there. Uh, and, yeah, that's actually going to be the end of the first episode. We got through a little bit over two years here, so very good timing. I know some people, it's, like, you know, super important to them that, that the, the date flies uh, quickly. Um, <laughs> I always thought it was kind of odd. Uh, but some people, it's really important that we make lots and lots of progress every episode or they'll, they'll gripe in the comments. Uh, so uh, for those that care about the date, we made good timing. Uh, and yeah, uh, I feel that it's going to be a rough, it's going to be a rough campaign, guys. It's not going to be easy. Uh, we are a little tiny, communist China here. Uh, so we're just gonna largely going to be defending here while at the same time uh, fighting against Japanese, we're going to be slowly infiltrating uh, the uh, states here in China and working towards our goal of, of making a communist China. Uh, as they're concerned with defending against Japan, we'll be over here infiltrating their provinces with the uh, focuses that unlock when you get infiltration. Uh, we're not getting that yet because you do have to use political power for that, and we haven't really had excess political power uh, because we've been trying to knock out these here. Uh, but now that we've just about got them unlocked, that is going to be something that we're going to want to go for. We'll probably go for that next, actually. Yeah, I think after we get the abolish the land rent, because uh, this isn't all that beneficial to us. Though, of course, uh, some of these later ones are uh, pretty good. Yeah, some pretty good stuff here that we definitely want to get. I think we'll get infiltration next, uh, so we can start working on those dis decisions. Try and get uh, communist infiltrators into the government. And uh, when we go to war with China, we'll have, uh, hopefully, by that point, we'll have a good base for that civil war, and we'll be able to, uh, you know get a bunch of states on our side as soon as the war starts, make this more powerful, because uh, it's going to be needed, uh, obviously. Uh, so I hope you guys did enjoy this first episode. Not a lot of action, of course. It's communist China. Anytime you play as a small country like this, you're going to have more limited action, more limited things you can do, which is why some people absolutely hate these uh, these more minor countries. Some people don't like watching them. Uh, I prefer them because they are very challenging. Uh, they provide a bit more of a challenge than we often see in our major uh, countries. So hope you guys did enjoy this first episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. If you're looking for any links, such as to our social media, like Twitter and Facebook, uh, or to our Discord channel so you can join our community, uh, as well as our PayPal and Patreon if you would like to help support the channel, because uh, remember, I am going to be going uh, to part-time work here in about a week. I think it's a week, week and a half. Uh, I, my hours are getting cut at, at work, so I'll be doing more YouTube uh, and making less money for my job, unfortunately. Uh, so all that stuff that does really, really help. Um, if, if I can't uh, produce a, a good amount of money from the, this YouTube thing uh, to kind of make up for the hours that I'm losing, I will have to go find another job uh, and go back to full-time work. It's just kind of... The, they, the nature of it, you know, we have a small channel, so we'll see how it works, guys. Um, but while I am doing the uh, part-time work, should see a few more videos per week. Uh, so that'll be nice, however long that ends up lasting. But yeah, if you want to help support the channel, join our Discord community, or if you're looking for any social media links, those are all down in the description of any of our videos. And yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Hope to see you on the next episode as we continue our fight against Japan. And thanks for watching.